Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's virtual plant clinic. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with University of Florida Extension here in Hernando County. And today I have my regular co-host with me, Lily Browning, who is the Hernando County Florida Friendly Landscape Program Coordinator. Good morning, Good morning Lily. Good morning. I did learn some useful information, which I'll share for you when I was out last week. So we'll, we'll you know, I learn something new every single day at work, whether I'm work at here at the office or, you know, working from home. Mm -hmm. I learned something new every day. I learned very useful information because I was at, see, um, there's a, a, what, a program called Leadership Hernando mm -hmm. in which I, you're invited as a uh, business leader um, in the county. Uh, there's usually a couple county workers in, in the class and they learn different things about it. I don't know whether it's a six weeks program or what it is, but they learn different things about Hernando County in general. And they always have a government day. So they meet at the courthouse. And that is when some of us, obviously not Bill, not Carmen, um, are asked <laughs> to um, have a little booth up there. Yeah, I don't have time for that. <laughs> and um, then we we listen this is you know the eighth year in a row that <laughs> but i always learn something new they listen to cut with several county commissioners um our um administrator um um, 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 um shirley anderson with the with the elections office mm -hmm. uh, nice you know, i may have listened to her eight times but she is incredibly interesting each time <laughs> she's a very ch charismatic speaker and um one of the departments that was there milling around talking about what they do was code enforcement so i got some i got the scoop on these two new uh code enforcement officers who are, they're called water resource officers mm -hmm. uh i know they um put out a whole bunch of um they cited a bunch of people in their first month and now I know what happens when you get cited. First of all, if they catch you <laughs> violating the watering restrictions here in Hernando County, if you are caught, that's $100. It's not a warning. Do you want to know what the second violation is, Bill? I don't know. I'm afraid to ask. $500. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, want to know. I guess they expect you to learn your lesson after the first time. You know, I know, do you want to know what the third violation is? I hate to ask. What? First born child. No, uh, you <laughs> are appearing before a special magistrate. So, um, which is, what does that mean? A special magistrate is a court appointed attorney, you know, for that event who will decide you know you know what what uh you owe at that point so it is not like you're just going to be charged a hundred dollars each time you're caught violating and some people have enough money and are so much in love with watering their grass they think it's a pay to spray program mm -hmm. <laughs> no that's not happening it, it's a tough it's a tough situation so so i see way. Everybody who's watching us, or almost everybody who's watching us who has said good morning, looks like is from another county. Oh, other than Fernando 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 County. County is listening. I know they are. So <laughs> very important, no matter what county you live in, if you're going to run your irrigation outside, you need to check with somebody in your county to find out what your watering restrictions are, because they're different in every county. They're different all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to see any of our regular listeners get in trouble or get a, a huge ticket. Maybe uh -huh. in your county, I don't know, maybe they just write you 10 warnings before they give you a ticket. I don't know. but Yes, Monique is in our county. Corey's in our county. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Monique's in the city of Brooksville. They're under the same watering restriction. All of Hernando County is on one day a week watering restrictions. No. 
<laughs> with him. Here's a question, question for you since you work for the water department. Are there any watering restrictions for water in your vegetable garden? No. <laughs> we we're talking about um, your automatic irrigation system for your lawn, you know, and landscape beds. There aren't any restrictions for watering your vegetable garden. Bill's going to tell you don't keep it on 24 7. That's not good for your water bill, and that's not good for your vegetable garden. How would you and recommend? Th this assumes that you have a reasonable vegetable garden. I would think that if you could get away with, let's say, plowing your entire front yard under and planting corn, and you put in automatic irrigation, wouldn't that fall under the irrigation restrictions? I don't know that that's ever been done yet at this point. Um, okay, I'm giving Monique ideas now. <laughs> hmm, maybe I need to try that and find out if I get in trouble or not. No, 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 we're not recommending you do that. No. And besides watering your vegetable garden, you don't really, I mean, a lot of times it's hard to avoid it, but you don't really recommend a lot of overhead irrigation. It's better not to, to do it, you know, yeah. from the ground. Yeah. Yeah, with vegetable gardens, um, soaker hoses or micro irrigation is a very good idea. You're going to use less water. You're going to only water your vegetables. You're not watering the weeds between the plants or in the rows. Um, for a small vegetable garden, a lot of people have overhead irrigation. People go out there. You can go out there with just a garden hose and water it in the evening while enjoying, you know, a, a adult beverage. And that's fine also. Like, unless you have a really large vegetable garden or basically a small farm, you're not using huge amounts of water to begin with. Right. Monique has too much shade for corn in her front yard. <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah, that would be a problem. Yes. Pretty much all vegetables need pretty full sun. Leafy things can take some shade. Except things corn. to flower and get some kind of fruit, like think tomatoes, eggplants, green peppers, squash. They all need lots of sun. Okay. And we have, uh, I don't know if it's a new listener or a stalker because, <laughs> well, not because it's a stalker, <laughs> lurker. lurker. I know we have people that probably follow observer. us. Observer. How about observer? Observer is a nice word. <laughs> So good, good morning, morning Hyvel. Good morning, Hyvel. Um, do you see Facebook users asking you about an email? Yeah, and you know, there are days when my email literally starts to go ding, ding, ding. They all start rolling in. So I don't remember this email, but as somebody who's just only over the border, which I would assume they live in probably Pasco County, and they are on a well. So if you live in Hernando County, Lily can tell you all about our watering restrictions, what it restricts, what it doesn't restrict, everything else. If you are just over the line into another county, that falls under another county. And Pasco's on one day a week. I think Citrus is too, but you'll have to find out from them. Um, go to your code enforcement page or, um, or just put in your county's Pasco County's watering restrictions and find out what day. Um, ours is according to your address. Um, so, and you can find that. I will post it on my Facebook page after this, but you can find it um, on our webpage and many, many, many places. If your address ends in zero or one, your day is Monday. Um, two or three, your day is Tuesday. Three or four, your day is Wednesday five or six, your day is Thursday, seven, eight, nine, I think your day is Friday, something, I may be getting that wrong, so let me put up the chart. I do know there is nobody who, um, if you don't have an address, like if it's a roadside or something, no, I mean, if there's something you want to water for whatever reason, like uh, median. Sometimes communities take care of the medians in front of their um, places. That's that's a Friday. There's no Saturday and Sunday allowances out there. Uh oh, so, I've seen that. I've yeah. seen a lot of neighborhoods on. 
And I'm sure what they thought in the past was code enforcement doesn't work on the weekends. I'll just water my lawn on my regular day and on Saturday or Sunday. Right. I'll never right. get caught. Well, Which these two new uh, water resource officers, their names are Jerry and Jonathan. Um, I know Jonathan really well. He's worked here uh, many years. Jonathan is somebody that if you give him a task, he's going to go for it. <laughs> so uh, and he, like he's very smart and, you know, he keeps a lot of information in his head. So um, Jerry and Jonathan split shifts. They work evenings, they work weekends, they work indeed restricted communities. And as soon as, you know, people start telling each other, ah, I got this hundred dollar fine. I think we're going to, we're going to see some changes. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of people will get what, it before they, they get the ticket. What it boils down to, we've had these one day a week watering restrictions for the better part of 12 years. There was a little portion years ago of maybe six months where they said, eh, okay, we'll revert back to the two days a week that SWIFT mud allows. Do you know what happened? SWIFT mud gives us, Hernando County Utilities, a permit to draw a certain amount of water out of the aquifer each month. Do you know what happened in that short six months that we allowed two day a week watering? Our water usage went through the roof. Yes, it did, and we went over our permits and we had to pay fines. <laughs> and then that goes, it's reflected back, you know, to the customer as well. Mm -hmm. As soon as we went back to one day a week, we had maybe once in 12 years on a, you know, during a very, very dry May, have we ever gone over our permit? So, you know, it works. Yeah. It works. And, and Bill, can you have a thriving lawn on one day a week watering? Yes, you can. <laughs> that's, that's the short and easy that's answer. That's the short answer. Yes, you can. Uh -huh. Because for most of the year, if we get any kind of rain at all, plus you're watering once a week, that's plenty of water. That's fine. Right. The only issue is if we have an extended dry period, but even then, if you have an otherwise healthy, properly managed lawn, it can survive just fine with one irrigation a week. If you have a sickly, improperly managed lawn, you're going to have problems. And that period of time where we allowed the two days a week um, and went over the permit, that was like 10 years ago. What's yeah. happened in the past 10 years? Oh my gosh! Think, well, things are growing like crazy right now. A lot more people here. So if we ever reverted back, um, no, we just can't. We yeah. can't. You know. Well, Corey says that in Pasco County, you can't have a zoning variance for a commercial garden or farm. I guess like a small farm, and use overhead sprinklers. You have to be water efficient, and they recommend micro irrigation or drip. Which is a great, that's what University of Florida recommends. It works well. A lot of commercial enterprises, so think like nurseries where they're growing out container grown plants, or maybe they're growing out palm trees or other ornamental trees that are in the ground. Then, after a certain point, they come in with the special digger and dig them up and put them on a truck and put them in your yard or your neighbor's yard. They all use micro irrigation. They, as a general rule, are not just blowing water all over 10, 20 acres because they can't. It's just too much water. It's too much wasted water. I'm looking for um, watering restrictions, seeing if they're in my bag here. I might have to go grab uh, one of the brochures. Okay, because Monique wants to know, can you give us yeah. the days they go where? So... Something I can definitely give you is Lily's email. So with any really, really difficult in-depth questions you might have, send them to this email address. Yes. And Lily will take care of them. Don't you handle plumbing questions also as part of your job? <laughs> uh, no, not specifically plumbing questions. I can... <laughs> Okay, so no plumbing question, but watering restriction 
questions for Hernando County, Little and Cancer, you're in the and market for any here. other county, who would they contact with their county? Um, start with the water company, the utilities sure. department. Mm -hmm. And then possibly code enforcement. Yes. Yeah, code enforcement is a good one to ask. You know, under what situations would you write me a big fat ticket? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now, um, uh, we are in the Southwest Florida Water Management Districts. We are in their district. We are one of their 16 counties. The Swift Mud allows two days a week, but if you look at their website it says very clearly that the municipality has stricter watering restrictions you know the the stricter restrictions uh take precedent and they have right up there in front on their website hernando pasco and the other um county and you know like city of lakeland maybe or something you know um those are one day a week you have to follow their water restrictions so uh, Corey's asking about food safety. Um, I think Pasco still has those courses, don't they, Bill? Yes. I just Googled that. The name of that program is Safe Serve. Yes. And it's for, um, well, it, I mean, it's very good information for everybody, really. Uh, a lot of people working at restaurants or running a restaurant, or I would assume a food truck and everything else. Yes, have to have 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 a, there, there has to be someone on staff who has that at all times. Yep. Yes. And I used to have it. I took the food safety course at University of Florida. And as a part of it, they let us take the, the test at the end. And I took mm -hmm. it and I passed and I was Me certified too. for a number of years. Me too. I, I still have my <laughs> diploma around here somewhere, I think. <laughs> it's expired, but. Um, oh, I took the class approximately. Uh, 35 times. No, <laughs> I was, I was an assistant to um, the family and consumer science agent at the time who, and she did that every month. She gave safe oh. surf classes. So I have heard it <laughs> many, 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 many times. And so then I um, also, you know, took the test once and was certified for that year or however long it was, four years, something like that. So good for a couple years, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yes, both Pasco County Extension and I, Citrus County Extension was offering it on a regular basis. Yes. Citrus County has a new uh, family and consumer science agent. I know for a fact Pasco does. You can contact them. Course, we do not. not. Right. Yes, so, serve safe. Mm-hmm. And that's the, is that the national? I think it's a national certification. I know it's state. But yeah. It even yeah. Be national. Um, so like you could take it and show it to, you know, Smoky Bones in North Carolina or something, and it should still be good, you know, for you to work there. Yes, yeah, it says it's actually recognized and accredited. Right. It's great for farmers to have too, because, you know, um, farmers markets, things like that, food prep. I mean, you're right at the source and there's uh, contamination issues you have to deal with as well. And we did, I gave a uh, food safety class for just backyard vegetable growers a couple of years ago at this point. It was definitely during COVID and we we're going to do another one because it's a really important topic. Mm -hmm. And we have a new person. Gosh, I haven't spoken to her in about a year. I'm, I hope she's still with us at Extension, but she was going to do it. Um, people people come and go, so yes. that's okay. We'll find somebody to, to give the class, and we'll have it again sometime really soon. Mm -hmm. That's something I need to put on my list here. We got a question about blackberry bushes, the Osage blackberries that we gave out last year during one of our classes for blackberries this time of year um weed them start fertilizing them lightly uh start watering them when it's dry uh 
University of Florida has a lot of information about pruning them, but if your plants are still small, I wouldn't bother pruning them back until this coming summer. So let them grow, possibly and hopefully flower this spring, possibly and hopefully give you some blackberries this season, and then the beginning of summer, you can prune them back. But for right now, unless you have any dead or broken branches, you could always prune them off. Uh, just get everything all cleaned up. I've got to clean mine up. I have a few in my backyard and they're overrun with weeds. <laughs> I need to get out there and pull the weeds and clean them up and give them a little uh, uh, tender loving care, I guess. So when are they like May? May or June? Yeah, strawberries are now. Blueberries are April. April. Yeah, blackberries are May. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> May or June up until close to 4th of July, although that's kind of pushing it. It is, because they're ready in August up north, so usually we're, yeah. like, two, we're like two months ahead of them and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right now is strawberry season. Hopefully everybody's getting good strawberries. Um, I was coming in last week. We had, we were on tour, you and I. Um, just one, one, every day we had some place to go. And anyway, I was coming back to the office carrying all my stuff and everything. And I guess it was this, um, this gentleman who works here in the office. It was his birthday and his family had sent him chocolate covered strawberries. So it was not a question I was anticipating as I walked by, but he's like, Lily, do you want a chocolate covered strawberry? And I was like, well, that is the silliest question I have ever heard. Of course I want a chocolate covered strawberry. <laughs> Wasn't what I was anticipating, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is strawberry season right now. <clears throat> Beat the bugs to the blackberries, I guess. Never heard of chocolate cover blackberries. No, this person is saying if they can beat the bugs to harvesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I could tell you the worst and most common pest for blackberries is going to be stink bugs. And they poke holes in little teeny tiny little blackberries. And then when the blackberries get bigger, they get either a bad spot or they rot because of the hole the stink bug poked into them. Oh, no, they are referring to strawberries. Sorry. Oh, strawberries? Strawberries can go for a bit longer. Well, not too much longer, maybe April at the latest. Then after that, it's really, really, really dicey with strawberries. They're going to have a lot of problems once we start to get hot. Corey, yeah, Corey said you could push blackberries up to as late as the 4th of July. 4th of July would. is kind of yeah. really pushing it, kind of. Well, I remember my mom knew of a patch of them um, in Masaryk town. <laughs> She'd go somewhere um, off in the woods to get them. And that seemed like that was always June. You know, somebody showed her this secret patch, except I'm sure she wouldn't find it now because I believe where she found that patch is now called the Ayers Road Extension. <laughs> <coughs> so, but yeah, the, it was great to find the, the what we were surprised blackberries grew in Florida. We didn't, you know, know that until some of the neighbors showed her. Yeah, it's just different timing. I'm surprised you didn't run across some when you're out there chasing the lost chickens to kind of gather them up and bring them they back didn't home. Go that didn't that happen? Well, they didn't go that direction. <laughs> <laughs> I was chased in the woods in the Sark town by a, uh, a wild hog, female one. Yeah, we still have lots of wild hogs. I was yeah, 11, 12, still fairly new here. My friend and I were just walking through the woods. And we probably came across, you know, a nest or babies or whatever. All I know is suddenly what I considered a wild boar was chasing me through the woods. It stopped once we got out to the road. But I'm running thinking, have I moved to Africa? What is going on? <laughs> so, 
Well, you know, we have the wild boars here. We have coyotes. And we've lived in our house for a couple of years now. The last place that we lived was only one mile away in a subdivision. And I saw lots of coyotes there. First time I've ever seen them yes. in Florida because we moved here from Volusia County. I'm sure they were in Volusia County. We never saw them. Um, so the other night I saw two in my neighborhood. It was shortly after dark. And they were trotting down the middle of the street. And they walk really fast. Like they weren't running. They were just walking fast and they move really fast. So we have coyotes here. We got all kinds of stuff here. <laughs> yes, uh, Corey. Uh, I wasn't thinking that because, you know, the, the Lion King didn't exist when I was a child. But um, it was, nor was it as friendly. <laughs> I was just thinking, run, get out. <laughs> Luckily, it decided the edge of the woods was where it was done chasing us. <laughs> okay, and a moment ago, I shared on some of our venues, definitely the uh, our Facebook page and the YouTube channel, a link to our very short, very painless survey. That if you haven't taken it in the past, if you could just take just a minute and do that, that'd be great. And I also went ahead and put it on the screen here. But, you know, that's a real long link. So I'm going to have to shorten that. I'll have to work on that. Baby's itchy to prune. I was thinking that yesterday. I was out there looking around, and I thought, just turn around and go inside. But I thought... Um, People got on prune. <laughs> and BB says that new growth has already started. Yes, it has. And believe it or not, that is on my to do list today. I was going to do it the other day. We are going to walk out front. I'm going to stand in front of our fire bush, which is completely brown and frozen. Mm -hmm. And okay. we're going to do a um, Facebook reel and a YouTube short, just a little one minute videos about. Don't prune them yet. Wait a few weeks till beginning of March. Soon enough, it's going to be safe to prune. And those the, um, fire bushes, the one here at the office, I have one at home. Do you have one? Yes. Yeah. Brown yeah. to the ground. Brown, 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 brown. <laughs> yeah. You can cut them back to literally ground level, and they're going to come back very quickly, but it's normal. All of our fire bushes are in that boat. Yeah, because well, whatever you have that has to be pruned, wait a few weeks until you do so. Uh, the fire bushes will come back from the ground. So um, you can prune them all the way to the ground. But if if this will help you, BB, because, you know, the we'll probably have at least one other freeze. Um, at least it, it won't be a long lived one, but it'll be like out of nowhere, be like, wham, freeze. And then. And you'll be like, whoa. <laughs> so uh, that dead growth is still going to protect even the new growth that's coming along. That new growth is very susceptible um, to any freeze or frost that's going to come along. And it'll act as a little bit of an insulating layer. If that is not enough um, incentive for you, if you say, I'm willing to take the risk because it's so darn nice outside, and my pruners want to prune. Um, think of the bees. The bees use a lot of that that old dead material. You know, they're still kind of using, um, our native bees might be using some of those stalks and sticks and things to be in. So that's kind of helped me walk away from it for a little while. It's a month. It's, it's one month and we can let you prune. Yeah, and we're to the point where it's a coin toss. Yeah. You can roll the dice and gamble and prune right now. We may not get, you know, the average last frost date for this part of Florida is February 20-something. And today is February 16th, so we're real close. But that's and, the average. And I know waiting a month, it's just going to be hotter outside. Yeah. Yes. So you want to do it now. I know you do. But just know you're taking a risk. 
<laughs> so oh, going back through a couple of questions here. Uh, is uh, saying she does not want it to freeze again, but it will. No. We have one more. We got one more in us. We've had a couple of cold mornings, but it was definitely well above 32. Yeah. And I saw no frost on windshields, roofs, or grass or anything. So I did. So. Last week, one day, I did have, I had frost on my windshield. So. so Corey is asking, what am I planting this week? I just planted seeds for yellow squash and cucumbers which are gonna go in containers in the backyard because I'm gambling that we're not gonna have any more devastating freezes, but it's a gamble. I don't know for sure. We may have, a, you know, what what would they call it probably? A freeze of the century or a, a, a winter vortex storm or something. It could happen, it's possible, but I'm gambling that it won't. And I have tomatoes and peppers started and they're in little containers. I need to go out there and kick them a few times or have a talk with them. They need to start growing faster because they're going to be going in the ground in just a few weeks here. I like to stick them in the ground before March 1st, but that's me. And then around them, um, green beans and yellow beans are going to go in. My wife, her favorite vegetable is green beans. I like green beans, but I like the yellow ones, the yellow wax beans and pole beans, and that will fill out my spring vegetable garden. Nice. But I'm gonna follow it with summer plantings, which this year is gonna be sweet potatoes, calabasa once again. I got free seeds for, um, what is it, orange bulldog, pumpkins, and it's a variety of pumpkin that grows well in summer. Comes from, bred by University of Georgia. Yeah, so I picked up on that. Yeah. And I got some free seeds for Seminole pumpkins, which are closely related to calabasa, but they're not the same. There's a lot of genetic variation between the two. Unknown caller. Oop. Sorry. Tell them to get on and, and put their question in the chat like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to log on 10 a.m. Thursday morning. You're here almost every week, and you can ask your question that way. Don't bug me on my phone, especially <laughs> if it's scam likely. So, <laughs> but those are the things that I have either going in this spring, and then when they're done, and they will all be done by early June, they're all going to come out, and other stuff goes in for the summer, and hopefully, I'll get a lot of food this summer. And Dr. Lester has promised me that he is going to film, record a spring vegetable class uh, to make it available, uh, you know, on, on your Facebook page, on our Facebook and on YouTube, and that you're going to be doing that in the next week or so, because I've been getting a lot of yeah. people who are interested in that. We're having a class tomorrow at East Hernando Library. It's pretty much full. It's a compost bin and vegetable gardening class. If you're in the area and you don't want a compost bin, you can show up just for the vegetable gardening portion of it. Um, 10 o'clock tomorrow at East Hernando Library, um, which is in Ridge Manor, east of the interstate. If you go under the interstate on Highway 50, instead of turning right to go to Cracker Barrel, you would turn left and go back a few blocks and you'll be at the East Hernando Library. And Dr. Lester will talk about spring veggie gardening there tomorrow. But because so many others are interested in it and can't make that or don't want to drive across the county, it's a big county. It's like an hour away from Spring Hill. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's a bit of a drive. Yeah. Um, he's going to do a recorded version because he loves us so much and he'll, he'll get that information out more readily available. You're getting lots of questions in here. I'm looking for something. So because oh. I checked, because you said that I don't have a video on just general spring vegetable gardening. And I checked my YouTube 
to see if I did or not. And you're correct. I don't. Okay. Um, I can read. Yes. <laughs> Louise. Thought I have one. Thought Louise. I have one, but I don't. So um, what I'm probably going to do, I'm free. Not really free, but I don't have anything scheduled specifically for Monday morning. I'll probably do the class through StreamYard, just like this, on Facebook Monday morning. If I'm going to do that, I'll go ahead and post it on Facebook today. So as always, everyone, follow us on Facebook to find out everything that we're doing. And if you want to find out about our classes, where do people go to find out about all of our classes to see a full listing? Lily, do you know? You should have it memorized. What, your, your Facebook page? No. Where do they? Do we have any listeners? I've only said this a thousand times. I have it memorized. It just kind of rolls right off. Well, I'll go ahead and say it. If you'd like to find out all of our upcoming classes and events, if you just go to www.hernandoextension, all one word, dot com, you'll find a full listing of all of our upcoming classes, events, mine, Lily's, when I go to her Facebook page and share them, I need to do that today. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else in our in our office who is doing classes. We have some on birds and natural resources and other, a little bit outside of gardening kind of topics. So, Pernino Extension, all one word, dot com. That's how you find out. Can I answer Louise's question now? Sure, you go right ahead. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Uh, she says, my azaleas are starting to bloom. Should they be pruned after blooming? They're kind of struggling. I'd wait. I mean, they're going to bloom for another two, three weeks. But yes, that's the time to prune them um, after blooming. If you wait till, I mean, the, the latest, 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 latest is June 30th um, to prune them. Otherwise, you won't have your pretty azalea blooms next year. <laughs> exactly. Here, let's go. Oh my God! Yeah, I am kind of getting behind here. Let's yeah, go all the way up got, here. Okay, Sam I was going to do that. <laughs> but Sam wants to become Elmer Fudd. <laughs> nice rabbit emoji. I respect yeah. that. I like that. Yes. I, I am picturing Elmer Fudd with the rifle <laughs> after the rabbits. How do you keep rabbits away from your vegetable garden? It's hard, isn't it? Two ways. One is fencing. Chicken wire fencing works. You have to bury it a little bit into the ground because otherwise they'll dig, they'll push under it. Or, you know, another surefire way to keep rabbits out of your yard? <laughs> Get a husky. There's Kashmir. He is the friendliest, sweetest boy. But anywhere, rabbits anywhere near him are in a really dangerous position. Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> Yeah, exclusion is the only real thing you can do. Yeah. Um, I have a neighbor who, you know, created a greenhouse <laughs> to keep them out of it. He was so frustrated with them. So, Monique, according to Corey, the polar vortex is collapsing. We're going to have some more cold weather. And yes, so and peppers, peppers do like it a little bit warmer. Tomatoes tolerated a little bit cooler. So if you're starting seeds early, like during the winter, in little pots, tomatoes almost always come up. But pepper seeds, you may have to keep the trays warm or put them inside or get a heating mat. And they make heating mats for trays of seeds to keep them warm, to get them to germinate and sprout and grow. I've had problems getting pepper seeds to come up when it's still chilly out. Now that it is very spring-like and, um, you know, spring has taken hold. So the kind of cold that we're going to have, this is my prediction, is, you know, it's going to be a, a hit and run cold where you'll walk out at seven in the morning and be like, what the heck? <laughs> it's cold. And you weren't expecting it. And then by noon, it'll be 80. And, you know. Yeah, I don't say happens. what the heck. I mean, this is a family show, so I'm not going to share what I do say, but I do not like the cold. I uh, 
I did. Uh, <laughs> yes, I altered my language for your family. <laughs> so, yes. And Glenda asked a very good question. Where do I get my sweet potato slips? Last year, I went to the grocery store and I bought four sweet potatoes and took just three gallon pots, filled it with soil, took the sweet potato and laid it sideways and buried it halfway, left half of it above the ground, started sending out little slips, little branches or shoots off of it. Each one, if you clip it all the way back at the potato and plant it, those things send out roots like overnight. Within a few days, you have a little rooted sweet potato plant. What okay. They kept yeah, going project. all summer project, and they never died. So when we had our cold fronts and freezes, I would drag them inside. I still have them going in pots. They look pretty bad, but I do have viable sweet potatoes making shoots. And soon I'm going to start clipping them off, putting them in pots, and starting a whole bunch of shoots. So by early June, I'm going to have a whole bunch of little sweet potatoes all going. I'm going to put them in the garden and let them go all summer. So all you really need to do is just get a grocery store sweet potato. Like I said, I don't see any, well, I don't have any sweet potatoes here. I don't see anything shaped like a sweet. Pretend this is a sweet potato. If you lay it like long ways on the soil and bury it halfway deep, it'll make shoots. Clip the shoots off, and that's how you make your own. We have another question about can I plant my mango, avocado, and lemon tree even though they have blossoms? Yes, you can. <clears throat> a lot of times when you buy a tree in a pot at the nursery, if they like, they like really like to have flowers or fruit on it because you look at it and you fall in love with it. Oh my gosh, look, it's got little oranges on it. I'm going to take it home, plant it, and in a few months I'm going to have a big pitcher of fresh squeezed orange juice. Sorry, it doesn't usually work out like that. Young trees generally don't hold the fruit they have on them or the blossoms until they get a little bit older. But do buy fruit trees, take them home, plant them correctly, care for them correctly. For anybody who has any kind of citrus, we did a class a week or two ago with the University of Florida citrus expert, and that video is being fixed up as we speak today. So it's at the front of the line. It's at the front of the line yes, we work on right now. It should be done expeditiously and will yep. be up on YouTube and on our Facebook page soon. And I he has some yep. really good advice how to care for your young citrus tree. Things that I'm going to do to my lemon tree. I have a Myers lemon tree. I'm going to do to it this weekend. So watch that class. Plant your trees. Care for them properly. And even though the blossoms they have today might not pan out to be fruit this year, soon enough, they'll flower and fruit. I know, yes, you've got that being worked on because I sent John, um, I'll, I'll look into my microphone issue. I'm not sure what, what is going on there, Corey. You have you a don't... webcam, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so do I. I need to get a better one because this yeah. is just a last minute COVID special. Um, do I sound normal to you, Bill? You do yeah. sound a little clicky <laughs> or scratchy. Well, scratchy Think is is old school record, old school records, a little scratchy. Okay, well, that could also be, you know, my allergies because I have a toxic relationship with nature this time of year. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, I. I I have recorded last night's rain barrel workshop. So those of you not in Hernando County, you now get to sit in on a pre-recorded rain barrel workshop. Anyone can listen to it. It does not qualify you to get a rain barrel from us. You have to be a Hernando County resident 
and you have to sit through a live, either live virtual or live in person workshop to be able to purchase a rain barrel. But for those of you out of the county who still want to hear it, um, as soon as John is done with Bill's thing, he will get mine ready for a YouTube. He's breaking my rule of Lily before Bill, but you know, I guess he was already in the middle of it. Yeah, we didn't like that rule, so we changed it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that'll be available soon if you, you know, really like, ooh, what goes on in your rain barrel workshops? <laughs> Yeah, at, least, um, at least get that information. It's not going to get you a ring barrel, though. Yeah. But. And Bill asks, he said he just pruned back a purple fountain grass. Can I throw a five-gallon bucket over it if a freeze comes through? Yes, that works very well. What works even better, find an old um, towel, like bathroom towel, pool towel, whatever. Throw the towel over first, then throw either a five-gallon bucket or a recycling bin that works well also or if it's bigger a trash can over it and that works very well to keep it warm if you need to and lily we have a question for you 10 o'clock tomorrow eastern Ando library and um, we do not have any more compost bins to give out probably not come and take the chance that you might get one, but don't expect one um, because there um, may be no shows, you know, and you might be able to get one if you're a Hernando County resident. So 10 o'clock will be the vegetable gardening portion with Dr. William Lester, world renowned I'll be there. Um, expert in Florida spring gardening. And right after that, we'll be Carmen Bruno will be presenting compost bins and they will also discuss how the two are a great partnership you know compost and vegetable gardens and um, somehow or another the Florida friendly landscaping person really just was the organizer of all of this and I want you to know every single person who signed up phoned <laughs> I had to deal with with phone calls and returning phone calls, and you know, an email is so much easier. But we should have a great turnout tomorrow, I hope. Well, we yeah. couldn't do it without you, Lily. <laughs> and Cindy says that she's been enjoying seeing Bernie do his short videos. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. I told him, I told him uh -huh. we to talk about that. We, well, we're going to keep doing it. He's going to be on there this afternoon. And we're going to try to get them on there every Thursday. We need help thinking of a title for it, though. We were thinking Thursdays with Bernie. Mm -hmm. So if any of you have any ideas or suggestions what we could call it, just a little, how long has he been going on for? Like five minutes? Five to seven, minutes. something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. with like almost a gardening tip or something that he's seen here at the office timely tip what's going on this time of year what is everybody else having a problem with and um yeah thursdays with bernie or if you guys can think of something better throw it in the chat box that burnology was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> and somebody's brassica leaves are turning yellow now yes we're winding down for brassicas that would be any kind of broccoli cauliflower cabbage brussels sprouts Kale is about to go. My bok choy and Chinese cabbage went, basically went to seed. The lettuce is about to go to seed because it's getting warm out there on warm days. So. Husky hairballs might keep away um, rabbits. I bet you could sell them. About. You could sell those, Bill. <laughs> There's a side hustle for you. Huskies make lots of hairballs. We used to have two, and they made collectively lots of hairballs. It would be like tumbleweeds blowing through the house. My daughter has one um, in Pennsylvania, and I got they had a warm spell. And you know it's going to get cold there again, so her dog is going to regrow her winter <laughs> coat probably. But she said she came home, and there was like, a duplication of the dog on the floor yeah. with all her hair. <laughs> it's called blowing their coat. 
and they generally do it twice a year. Yeah. And you can just pull fur off with your hand mm -hmm. in clumps. And you can brush, 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 and it doesn't, it seems like it doesn't help. But it may be helpful to put that around your fencing or inside your fencing to give animals something to think about before they start invading your vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not too hot right now, but too hot is getting very, very close. And some, some years it like overnight, all of a sudden, it seems like we'll go straight from, you know, winter and February 17th or 18th, boom, it's the first day of summer. That's what it feels like. <laughs> definitely spring because that pollen is in the air when it rained the other evening it looked like somebody spray painted a yellow line across my driveway that was just all the pollen coming off the roof yep. and my wild cherry tree in my neighbor's yard that hangs over my yard is flowering it just put out new leaves um we're asked here is it too late for seeds i still haven't gotten them planted what it, it depends on what you're planting from seeds. So for planting green beans, squash, cucumbers, things like that in the ground, nope, we're just about to the right time of year. For starting tomato transplants, unless it's a very fast-growing variety, it may be a little late for starting them from seed because they take a fairly, they take a longer time to grow. And Monique is thinking about keeping her beans and cucumbers inside forever. They're already about four inches. Really soon, you're going to be able to put them in the garden. See, sweet potatoes and squash generally do take a lot of room. Sweet potatoes, you can grow the starts, the little slips in a pot. But to get sweet potatoes, you have to grow them in the garden. They need the room to make the potatoes. Squash, there's a lot of varieties that you can grow in containers. Um, Three-gallon pot would be the very minimum. Five-gallon would definitely be better. But I've grown them in five-gallon pots. I'm going to this spring. So they do well. Uh, you just need to get that summer squash in early, early. Don't email me in July or August asking me why is my squash or cucumber plant look terrible? <laughs> because it's July or August. Because <laughs> because probably it's dead. And I'll see pictures on Facebook groups of like completely dead plants. I see pictures of completely dead palm trees, like completely brown and leaning. What can I do to make my palm tree look better? And uh, the advice is just, Epsom salts, fertilizer, this, that, every goofy thing you can possibly imagine. It's like, I'm sorry, it's dead? Oh, somebody only has one bloom on their peach tree. Be patient, might get more. And is avocado or citrus fertilizer good for peach trees? University of Florida has a ton of information on Peach trees, if you look up University of Florida stone fruit, peaches, plums, and nectarines are all like really, really closely related. They're all called stone fruits. But yeah, av the avocado citrus fertilizer would work just fine. It's safe to use on peaches. And Lily, we have some more comments on your uh, microphone. <laughs> Is it better when I get closer to it? Yes, less less staticky. It's and not, it's my not voice. your voice. <laughs> okay. Right and Facebook user is going to be interested in the um, rain barrel class. If you go to Hernando County Government YouTube, go to YouTube, just put a search for Hernando County Government, then look for my playlist, Florida Friendly Landscaping. Play There's only about eight playlists on there, so you'll find it. And um, I have a playlist also for Hernando County Extension. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, it's not there yet, but we it should be there. It'll be at the top. 
by the end of the day. But while you go there, you'll see the 104 other <laughs> videos I have there. So if you have any trouble sleeping, I'm here to help. And after you put it on Facebook, you normally email me and I go up, go in and share it on ours. So. Mm -hmm. Boy, it looks like we got like the Bernie fan club going on yeah. here. Bernie, oh, Bernie, watching his work. Bernie knows everything. He does. That is true. Or I know Bernie very, very, very well. <laughs> Bernie. <laughs> is one of those who is really good at acting like he knows everything. <laughs> no, he speaks very, with authority. He's very well read. He is, he defines the word curious and he's never stopped being curious. And if he does not learn something within a day, then it is a day wasted to him. And he is very happy to share all of that information. I'm a big believer in lifelong learning also. And that's part of the reason why we keep doing this is mm -hmm. that way you guys can come and join us every Thursday morning and learn hopefully something also. So Basem asks a very good question. Can you grow yucca in central Florida? Yes, it grows in the summer here. Um, yucca, what's the other name for it? Um, begins with a C. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe it doesn't begin with a C. I forget. <laughs> uh, yucca is a, uh, a root crop, and it grows very well here in the summer. It'll freeze and die back in the winter. It's tropical. It's a tropical vegetable, so it does not like freezing cold weather. But, yeah, that's something else that I need to grow. I need to get my hands on some um, to put in this summer and give it a try. I like yucca. Yucca is very um, uh, an important. I used to work. I did an internship with a young lady who moved here from Cuba, born and raised, went all the way through college in Cuba, had the opportunity to move to the U.S. And she was great to work with. She made she brought in lunch one day and she made um, yucca with uh, like garlic oil sauce. Cassava. Cassava, that's it. Cassava is the other um, <laughs> name for it. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> it was excellent. So yucca is a very starchy root crop. I like It's similar to potato, but different from potato, a little firmer than potato. But I think it's very good. It's a starch. Yes. Hopefully Corey thinks it's very good also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rabbit manure in the garden. Yes, rabbit manure is very good in your garden. Generally better to put it in your compost pile and compost it first before it goes in your garden. Rabbits have a low potential for having nasty pathogens in their manure, but it's still possible. I'm not going to tell you that it's impossible because it is possible. But rabbit manure tends to be safer to use. Don't throw the rabbit manure away or just leave it, let it to lay on the ground or whatever. Do something with it so that it ends up in the garden eventually. And you, um, when we talk about compost, you address the manure issues and there are safety issues. Mm -hmm. Not so much rabbit. Rabbit's probably the safest out there, isn't it? Um, Rabbit is technically one of the potentially safest. Right. You still can. It'll, it can still have pathogens. But if you're looking at um, cow, horse, chicken, there are definite. Um, you recommend talking, you know, to you about the extra steps you need to take for mm. for safety. Chicken, chicken manure. And for anybody watching us who raises chickens, you should already know that chickens are like little salmonella factories. When you have chickens, when you're dealing with chickens, you're handling them, this and that, the the nasty hand sanitizer is your best friend and you will go through five gallon buckets of it. And if you don't, and you start eating a sandwich or chewing your fingers or whatever, you may end up sick from salmonella. So. 
So starting annual season of seed tray and keeping them outside right now? Yep. I, my tomato and pepper seedlings are outside. If it gets, for me, like 35, a potential low of 35 overnight, I'll bring them in. <sighs> I've dragged all the dragon fruit and pineapple and everything else in a few times this year. It's going to have to be pretty much guaranteed 32-ish for me to drag everything back in again. I'm getting tired of it. And the uh, crooked squash or cr uh, technically crook neck squash, the yellow squash or zucchini squash. Yeah, plant the seeds right now in five-gallon buckets because they will not tolerate freezing. But if they're in buckets, you can still pick them up and carry them if you absolutely had to. And like I keep saying, within a few weeks, we're going to be most of the way safe. Day by day, we'll get safer and warmer. So I'm not anticipating having to drag everything back in again. Yeah. And it's just about that time. Looks like we're showing, oh my gosh, we have more comments here. We're showing pretty good uh, time management. So somebody uh, loves us. We love you too. We love our regulars and our, our fans here. Yeah, I think mean, someone's having a trouble with their vermicastings. We have a class on that. Hernando County Government's YouTube. It's on there. Mm -hmm. Yes, root, root veggies are very high on the glucose chart. So if you, um, you know, just like any starch, same with potatoes, even sweet potatoes and all that. If that is something you need to watch, then obviously, you know, <laughs> don't consume high amounts of it. Um, and that's, that is their survival is all that energy and those carbohydrates and calories in that tuber. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to live on them. No. <laughs> and Monique's vegetables are already hardened off. They're in and out every day. That's great. It sounds like you're pretty well set. If you're trying to grow tomatoes and peppers and those things, just get them up. Get them growing, get them going, keep them evenly watered. And I tell you what, I'm looking out the window right now. The weather we have outside today is perfect for tomato seedlings. I'm going to have a long talk with mine this afternoon and kick them if I have to, to get them no. up and growing faster. Be nice to your plants. Yeah, no, I did. Um, <clears throat> I gave them liquid fertilizer yesterday. Hopefully that will help. Well, that's, I guess that's the equivalent of kicking them, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And watch the watering. Don't let them dry out. Um, don't let them sit in mud. So don't go crazy on it. We're not growing rice. We're growing tomatoes. <laughs> and Basim, thank you so much. Uh, and here is a final good question, because this is something that I do. Can I compose, and I assume that means compost, the roots of my brassica and put in the composter? Yes, you can. Brassicas, like I said earlier, the broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, especially broccoli and Brussels sprouts, the plants are really big, and the part you eat is relatively small. So in the end, what you end up with is just this big broccoli plant that you really can't eat, you can take the stems and make broccoli slaw, but if you don't want to, I got this big broccoli plant that pretty soon it's going to be time for me to pull out of the garden. What do I do with it? Chop it up and compost it. All the plants in that family uh, contain a lot of sulfur compounds. And if you either chop it up really small, the leaves and the small parts, and work it in your garden, or take the roots and the big fat stems, there are big fat stems, and compost them. That is really good for your soil. It helps to sanitize your soil to a certain extent. Nematodes don't like it. Fungi don't like it because the the as it breaks down and it gives off the sulfur compounds, it helps to chase away bad things in your soil. They've done research on that, and I've tried it. And if nothing else, it's a great way to add organic matter to your garden. 
Mm -hmm. So compost the leftover broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, other stuff when it goes to seed and it just doesn't taste really good anymore because you're a little late picking it. Don't throw it in the trash. Compost it. It's all good. It's all going to break down. Make it go back into your garden at some point. And if you keep doing that, you'll be able to grow a lot of food in your vegetable garden. That's the goal. That's the thought for today. And it's time to wrap it up. Didn't that work out perfectly? You did an, an amazing job. I was riveted. I, I hit it correctly every once in a while. So on that yeah. note. I thought you were going to start any... singing the circle of life. But because yeah. <laughs> we've got a Lion King theme going. <laughs> I leave the singing part up to you. So oh, Okay. Well, yeah. my voice isn't even good today, let alone my singing. So Pollen. Yes, Lily is our pollen indicator. She tells us when it's really bad. It's really bad. Okay. <laughs> like I said, do you have pine trees or the pines? The pine. I have pines. I have oaks. I have. I mean, I don't understand. I, I'm a nature advocate, you know, and just this time of year, it, it, it's 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 mean to me. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, oaks are just about to bloom. Cherries are blooming. Azaleas, I guess, are blooming, aren't they, in downtown? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Go take a ride downtown before they're done. Hurry up. They're gorgeous. So spring is I'm sure here. I'm sees them everywhere when she's walking all her little doggies and big doggies and in between picking vegetables. <laughs> So, uh, yes, the azaleas are gorgeous. And to all of our regulars, Lee, Cindy, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Everybody else, Monique. Move some things on this. Maybe it just needs a little adjustment. That could be. And Monique makes a good final point. Lots of oak leaves for mulch. Oh my gosh, don't bag up oak leaves and put them out for the trash man. Oh, oh. Bring them to my house. I'm serious. Bring them to my house. I'll run the lawnmower over them and grind them up and we'll get them damp and we'll put them in a massive pile and they will be compost in just a few months and they will go in the garden. They'll be, they'll be mulch on the surface because they'll finish breaking down and go in the soil. And... Monique, good for you. She's been taking all the neighbors, oak leaves. <laughs> Take as many as you can handle because it is a fantastic resource. It will, in the long term, build up your soil, give you fantastic soil. And I don't care whether you're trying to grow azaleas or broccoli or, or, or marigolds or whatever you're trying to grow. It's going to make everything grow better. I hope long. she means her neighbor's leaves. I Not just that's the neighbors. That's what we're talking about. Yes. And free, <laughs> you know, free really is best. <laughs> so, hey, everyone, I think we're going to wrap it up for today, but we will be back here again next Thursday at 10 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. So what, the 22nd? Something like that? I think, let's see. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at my calendar. It will be the 23rd. Uh oh, um, it will be the 23rd. And I will almost definitely be on here with you. But our district director is coming to town next week for our appraisals. So. <laughs> so. Yeah, he wouldn't get rid of you that quickly. So you're, you'll be able to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll pick a time for yeah. my appraisal. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> I could plan on meeting with him right after the virtual plant clinic or and you just could hand, bring... his, hand his email out to everybody and have everybody blow up his email, but I won't you do can... that. Bring him on. Let them. <laughs> I've tried before. I need to get Jim back on also. Yeah, yeah. You know, we could have 10 people on here. I'll bring them all on. <laughs> the more the merrier. We'll each have a little box and we can all share. And you guys can tell them 
Um, what a great job I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody keep tuning in. And, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to get rid of me next week. I'm just thinking that um, I'll, I'll have to request a time that's not between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. So okay. I'm planning on being back here at this point. We've always got Bernie if you can't make it. Oh, sure. We'll have somebody. Yeah. Somebody to sit in. Okay, well, thanks again, everybody, and we'll see everybody back here again, hopefully next Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh -huh. And think up really hard questions, take pictures, and we'll all figure out what's going on together, I guess. Have a great week. Okay, bye, everyone.